Ezekiel chapter number 8. Remember, we're talking about a loving, holy God. 6. Ezekiel chapter 6. We're talking about a holy, loving God where the people are sinners. And we have seen sword, famine, drought, blood, fire. That's what God's attitude is to sin. So when you walk in a church and you've got all love, you've got an off church. When you've got a church that's all sugar, it's a diabetic church. You got in Jeremiah and Ezekiel, you got the angry gods against sin. Now he said, for, for I, God, said, love the world that I gave my only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in shall not perish. Well, what do you do with those that don't believe in the Son? Do they get a little corner in heaven? I don't think so. And when you read these chapters, we go through these books, you've got to realize God is angry. That nice little God that you can control and, and hold him in a, in a little manger at Christmas time has grown up. And we pick off of chapter 6. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying. Like I said, the, the chapter markings are not inspirational. But they are close to. And when you read these few chapters in Ezekiel, it's like there is... There, 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 chapters are not, in the, are not in the text. They're not there. They've been added. And they've been added by prayer. The verses are added by prayer. It would be it would be really great to open. Okay, everyone open up their Bibles to page 845, three quarters way down in the column. Begin with this. The chapters and the verse markings are a great aid to study the Bible, but when we read verse 517, So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee, pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. And the Lord, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, God's not done speaking. We've just changed the subject. But God is still speaking about the same thing. Son of man, as said of Ezekiel, and as said of the Lord Jesus Christ, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, O... Oh, and say, ye mountains of Israel. Now, isn't that a funny commission? That'd be like the Lord called me and says, I want you to go down there in Daytona Beach. I want you to go down to City Island. Yeah, I know where that is, Lord. I go down there, try to go down there every Saturday. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to go down there like you do. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, what are you doing? I'm going to preach. Who are you going to preach to? I'm going to preach to the people. No. No, you're not. I want you to turn around and I want you to preach to those palm trees over there. What? You heard what I said. Here's a message. I want you to preach to those trees. You say that's ridiculous. Yet we see the prophets preaching against mountains, preaching against cities, preaching against all kinds of things. And God calls Ezekiel, hey, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. The mountains are the subject of what God is speaking. Now we know we don't expect the mountains to hear you. But you run into some kind of things when they start preaching the trees as I gave the illustration. But mountains of Israel hear the word of the Lord God. God knows what he's doing. I don't. Do you know that rocks can record a voice? If you are old enough like me, you know what a cassette tape is. You know what an 8-track tape is to show how old you are. Those have a rock mineral material that actually records sound. And if men were capable before electronic recording devices, I, I could assume if you were to pick up some different rocks, I bet you could record. 
I was not recorded. You could hear what was recorded by people passing by. Didn't Jesus at one time say, you know, they held their what? Even the rocks will cry out? Wouldn't it be interesting if you really want to prove Jesus Christ, you go to Jerusalem, start picking up some rocks and, and do what you can do to get the sound and hear Jesus quote from the King James Bible? Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. There is the subject. You know what the problem is with the mountains, the hills, the rivers, and the valleys? There are high places. Do you know any churches that have a high place on the roof? Do you know of a place that built a tower to reach heaven by their own works? Do you know the sexual content of the meaning of high place? Of steeples and trying to be clean? Of the male deity? And your altars. What did God say in the law about the altars? They were supposed to be in Jerusalem. They were supposed to be in the temple. There's only two altars that were ever spoken of. That would have been the brazen altar and the, and the, the golden incense altar that was inside the holy place. It's not the holy place. God's telling us that the mountains, the valleys, and the rivers have altars. The incense altar that the golden uh, uh, inside the tabernacle and the brazen altar were the only ones that God told Israel to, to offer the sacrifice. And here they are in the mountains. So purple, majesty, and all that the other lyrics there. I can go in the, I can go in the woods and worship God. That definitely says that no. God has ordained a place. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You're going out in the woods and you're not mentioning God and by yourself or with your prayer, your beer drinking buddy to go get some animals, whatever you're doing. Your altar shall be desolate. That means empty. No one's going to be there. No one's going to tend to them. Your images, oh, there's images on those mountains, shall be broken. So altars and images. Images you don't find as a worship in the temple. Yeah, you found cherubim, you found palm trees, but they weren't made for uh, worship. They were made for design. And only the priests saw it. No one outside ever saw that. Shall be broken. I will cast down your slain men before your idols. So look at that. Altars, images, and idols. If you got altars, if you got images, and if you got idols, the three of them in your church, you're on dangerous ground. I've even heard so far as a preacher one time, if you don't come to this prayer altar, God's not hearing your prayer. You're a fool. I've seen Baptist churches with pictures, our founding preachers of this church. Ho, 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 ho. What are they great men? No, the Bible says only Jesus Christ was a great man. And then idols. Oh, all kinds of idols. I will lay the dead carcasses, that's dead bodies, of the children of Israel before their idols. Isn't that God just mocking those idols? What are you going to do for your people? There they are dead in front of you. That's like the uh, Dagon. Isn't it funny that Twice that the Philistines woke up and there's Dagon cutting pieces. There's Dagon falling before God and they had to pick their God up. Doesn't that make you just think? Come on. Is beer your God? Why doesn't it open itself? Why you got to open it up? Say, Mr. Beer, you're God. Open yourself up so I can drink you. Come on, open up. Why you got to do it? 
Why you got to carry your God? I grew up a Roman Catholic. I can say this. I grew up in Rome, Roman Catholicism and the Catholic Church and all that and all the junk. Wherever Mary had to go, she had to be carried. And God said, I'm going to kill your followers, your worshipers, right in front of you. In all your dwelling places, the city shall be late waste, and the high places shall be desolate, and your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and seized, and your if you, you get the idea that God's against it. Altars, images, idols. You think God's against it? Your idols may be broken and ceased, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. I think God's angry. So if you're to walk in any denominational church, and you've got these three things, I don't think God's happy with your church. Going by Ezekiel, and I don't care who you are. It's got to be a form of worship, all right? You may have pictures of, of great men of faith. Okay, that's fine. You're not worshiping them. You're probably studying their lives and what they did for God. But there are churches, they're worshiping the images. They're worshiping the idols. And they call them aids to worship. And they have idols that are outside God that are men themselves. Listen, I know of people, if the, if the pastor left the church and went cross country to start another church, they would move across the country too, to follow that man. If that pastor were to die in their church, they would die too, spiritually. And then there are churches we've been in, they got idols. Well, it's just a decoration. Yeah, but to all the other world, it's it's a item of worship. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I am the Lord, what? To get rid of all that junk. Get rid of all that imagery. Get rid of all that religious stuff. I grew up in that. I never heard Ezekiel 4... Five and six were Daniel ever mentioned by the priest. I see why. And yet I'm not speaking about Roman Catholicism. I'm talking about the Baptist Christian. When you go into their children's room, there's posters. That's an image. When they got their little uh, stuffed animals that can make you big money, or dad's got the papers in the safe that make him money, that's an idol. And you sit or stand in that place and do your craft to your God, that's an altar. I will, yet will I leave on Redmond. Besides the death, the destruction, and all that, there's going to be some that are left. Jews will not ever die out completely. That ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the country. So there's going to be Jews left. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, where they shall be carried captives, because I have broken with their whorish heart. Oh, you mean they're buying sex? They're going out to women and they're purchasing women. Okay which has departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a-whoring after their idols. We're not talking about sex. We're talking about those idols again. And you know what God likens you to if you got idols, aids to worship? You are a whore in your heart. If any man look upon a woman, if any man look upon a woman to lust after her in his heart, has already committed adultery with her. Matthew five.
which hath departed from me. That's God speaking. When you got your idols, you departed from God and you're a whore. How many people are going to end up in hell with a charge of being whore and not even realize it? You go to most of those people that go to the churches, you, you tell them, give me the description of a prostitute or a whore, and they'll, they'll cringe. Ooh. And yet, with your idolatry, you are a whore. I didn't say that. Ezekiel 6, 9. I didn't say it. God said, I'm just reading to you. And they departed from me with their eyes. So they took their eyes off Jesus. Which go a whoring after their idols. They shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed. What did they commit? They committed the idolatry. What's God say? It's called an evil. Can't you get it straight? Which have committed in all their abominations. Great words. Whore. Evil, abomination, subject, idols. And they shall know that I am the Lord, that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil upon them. Evil, again, is the result of sin. What is the evil going to be done to? Death and hell and destruction. And desolation and the dead bodies laying in front of their idols. Thus saith the Lord God, smite with thy hand and stamp with thy foot. You just see uh, Ezekiel doing that. The illustration. And say, Alas, for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel. That's a Explanation point. That's serious. For they shall fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Again, what's the subject? Idolatry. I'm talking about your mother. I'm talking about your father. I'm talking about your wife. I'm talking about your children. I'm talking about your grandparents. I'm talking about your neighbors. I'm talking about your co workers. I'm talking about everybody in the world that is involved. I don't care what religion you are. If you got idolatry, we're speaking about you. So, what's that TV show called? What would you call baseball cards with a picture of the, of the people on it? With all the stacks on the back, and yet probably can't name five or three of the disciples of Jesus Christ? What about the posters? Isn't that imagery? What you desire, what you want in life? I mean, would, do, do you really want to see Jesus right now? Or there's something more important in your life. If there's something more important in Jesus coming right now, you have sinned. Well, my dad needs to be saved. I've done all I could for my dad. I'm sorry. You mean you would? No, I wouldn't. I'm sorry. I have given my dad enough of the gospel. I'm still giving the gospel until I die or the rapture. But other than that, I want the Lord to come right now. I won't have blood on my fingers for him. I want the Lord to come right now. Well, what, what about your degree in new Who cares about that stuff? I want to go. Sword. Famine and pestilence. That sounds really good, doesn't it? And then you think about it. When you bring this junk into your church, you're inviting sword, famine, and pestilence. 
troubles, evil, the result of sin. You bring that stuff into the churches and you've got a dead church. You've got a desolate church. You got a church that's an abomination. You got yourself the last and seeing church eh, that makes God sick. And we don't need God. We've got all the stuff that man can offer us. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence. So if he's on a journey somewhere, he's out of Judah. And he that is near in the city in Judah shall fall by the sword, the army. And he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. If you're away, if you're near, if you're left behind. Pestilence, sword, and famine. Over and over. Isn't this the same message that uh, Jeremiah has been preaching? Ezekiel's been carried to Babylon. He's preaching to the Jews in Babylon. It ain't over because you guys ain't got right. You know when, when uh, Jacob left, at one point in time he had to take Rachel's idols and bury them under an oak and the idols were carried along. And one of the idols were carried along in, in the, the captivity. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord, when their slain men shall be among their idols, round about their altars, upon every high hill, in all the tops of the mountains, and under every green, anybody know about that one? Every green tree? Old Tannenbaum, old Tannenbaum, and under every thick oak. The place where they did offer sweet Savior. There's your diabetic message right there. I wonder what pulpits are made from what trees today. Would you guess an oak maybe? Now people, we're going to just talk about the love of God. And we're going to tell you that part of our collection today will go to underprivileged people in India to get shoes. Don't forget to fill your shoebox with Korans and all the kinds of duty for the people over in this country over here. And never mind supporting a preacher that's going to preach the Word of God with a Bible. Now, don't we just all feel good now? Let's pat ourselves on our back before we leave the church. Amen. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you are listening to the idiots. Sweet savor to all their idols. You gone back and read what's about those sweet savors that's supposed to be given to God? They turned around and gave it to their idols. So will I stretch out my hand upon them and make the land desolate, yea, more desolate than the wilderness toward Dibala. In all their habitation, and they shall know that I am the Lord. I would assume by Ezekiel chapter 6 alone, if that's the only thing I ever had of the Bible, if I never had a Bible, and wherever I didn't have a Bible, if somehow Ezekiel chapter 6 floated into my lap and I was to read it, I would have safely assumed the fact is that God hates. Idols and giving offerings and worship to idols. And anything that is an idol is best described as if it's not God you're honoring, it's an idol. And it can be a person, place, or thing. Some people's idols are not even a proper noun, it's just a noun. 